Regis Philbin grew up in the house behind me here on Kruger Avenue in the Bronx Park East section of the borough. He says that he and his friends used to play stickball right here on the streets and have plenty of fun going to nearby Bronx Park. Reporting from Morris Heights in the western section of the Bronx, I'm Joel Mahan, News 12, and now back to you, Kevin. Senior citizens have to walk past the closed bus stop along the sidewalk, which is full of lumps and stumps and cracks. They say it's especially dangerous during the wintertime with all the ice. All the way down to the new bus stop, which is some two football fields behind me. Maxwell House Coffee's Big Cats Weekend goes on through Monday here at the Bronx Zoo. And judging from what I've seen, it's a roaring success. Reporting from the Bronx Zoo, Joel Mahan, News 12. Once again, the Yankees are back in the playoffs, hoping for a 25th World Championship. And this time... All the fans have been here online, many of them since last night, waiting in the rain just for a chance to participate in the Yankees ticket lottery system. Thank you, Kevin. I'm Joel Mahan here live on the Upper East Side at New York Presbyterian Hospital, where CBS late night talk show host David Letterman is recovering from quintuple bypass surgery. Doctors say the emergency procedure was necessary after they found a blockage leading to Letterman's heart. Letterman has a history of heart disease and he suffers from high cholesterol. Dr. Wayne Isom, who performed the procedure, says that Letterman has the heart of a 20-year-old and he's hoping for a speedy recovery. In his autobiography titled, I'm Only One Man, he reflects on his life and career in broadcasting. It was your first book. First one and maybe the last, Joel, unless you've heard something. <laughs> the book addresses several topics, including how he overcame stage fright and feelings of low self-esteem. Uh, it was pervasive. At Cardinal Hayes, I never went out for anything. There were speech classes, you know, and drama classes and all the things that might have given you some preparation for our business. Was afraid. Went to the University of Notre Dame, could not even knock on the door of the radio and television station to ask for a job sweeping the floor. That's how bad it was. And it wasn't until I got in the service and on the way out of the service met this tough old Marine who gave me a pep talk to go and try for it at least, and then I got my foot on the door and then I was a truck driver and a stagehand and did all the things that, and, and a page as you were, uh, at NBC here in New York and finally stuck with it long enough and then forced it to happen, I guess. Reporting from the ABC studios in Manhattan, Joel Mahan, News 12. About 20 residents of this Pelham Gardens neighborhood say their lives are turned upside down every time it rains hard. Those who live in the area, including Victor Sinquemani, say that their homes have been flooded by sewer water four times in the last two years. Well, what happened is the city came in one day and decided they were going to put catch basins in front of my house and a couple other houses in the neighborhood. Uh, they came unnoticed. Uh, there was no notice or anything. that They just came in and put these catch basins in. Now that it's starting to rain, the catch basins are filling up and that back pressure is causing water to go into mine and other residents' houses in the neighborhood. Sinquamani feels his son's high temperature and flu-like symptoms are connected to the dirty water coming into his house. His next-door neighbors, Elio and Joanne Sanchez, are also affected. The most recent flood Sunday caused thousands of dollars in damage, ruined their two-year-old daughter's Christmas toys, and it's not even covered by their insurance. Mr. Sanchez says he tried to get help from Senator Guy Valella and other local officials. He came into the neighborhood. He never did come into our house. And he said he would handle the situation, and we're still waiting. Attempts to contact Senator Valella's office on Sunday were unsuccessful. Neighbors here at the corner of Woodhull Avenue and Hawthorne Street say they're forced to cover their sewers with carpets in order to keep the water from going down into the drains. Reporting from Pelham Gardens in the northeastern section of the Bronx, Joel Mahan, News 12. While the Yankees are sweeping their opponents, fans are sweeping up playoff tickets. The first tickets for the American League Championship Series went on sale Sunday. The team issued numbered wristbands and then held a random lottery drawing to determine the order in which people could purchase tickets. The lottery drawings were announced by Roberto Clemente Jr., son of the late legendary Pittsburgh Pirates Hall of Famer. Even the driving rain could not dampen the loyalty and dedication of fans. No matter how much the rain came down, we didn't move from the spot. We are a Yankee fan, 100%, and I'm going to die a Yankee fan. Many of these fans camped out here at the stadium all night long just for a chance to participate in the ticket lottery system. I just figured that I wanted, I didn't want to miss out like last year, get tickets, so I wanted to make sure that I got a wristband, so I just, you know, slept out. Seth Queller's wristband number was the first to be drawn, allowing him to be the first person to purchase playoff tickets. It was very simple, very easy, and obviously very exciting. But not all shared his enthusiasm about the ticket distribution process. Bill D'Antone argued with police and Yankee officials about a misunderstanding 
which was resolved. At first they wanted me to go back all the way around the stadium and wait online again, which was a little ridiculous, seeing how I did it once already. I wasn't trying to jump the line or cut anybody. I, I did what I had to do, and they still wanted to send me back around. Reporting from Yankee Stadium in the South Bronx, Joel Mahan, News 12. One could say that Van Cortland Park went to the dogs on Sunday, but in a good way. It was all part of the Parks Department's 6th Annual Pets, People, and Parks event. The day's activities included aerial frisbee antics, as well as a challenge course to test the agility of the canines. The festival provides valuable information and entertainment. We're really trying to promote good, um, responsible pet ownership today, as well as just coming out and having a great time. Reporting from Van Cortland Park in the northwestern part of the Bronx, Joel Mahan, News 12.